last defender changed you know people's perception of the defender in general like i feel like like when, at least when i was growing up that was the epitome the top of the line you know that's what everybody wanted in the uk because they couldn't have it often you know the v8 car it has alloy wheels it has some more exciting colors than maybe what you would get in some other markets well, Weisler just, green. Right. Yeah. Weisler yeah. green. Yeah, I like that. I like that color. Well, I'll, I'll tell Mr. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. so the, the vehicle's also actually related to another one, the SV90. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go back, the SV90 came about on the back of an idea called the Landra Kariba, which was a, a soft top concept vehicle from the 1980s. Yeah. And just it's very, very cool. Caribbean market? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort of that, it was like that kind of vibe. V8, very big, sort of wide steel wheels. Obviously, uh, you know, the main customer at that point in time was still the British military. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really go sort of go down terribly well then, the idea of doing a lifestyle defender <laughs> until the 1990s. And, you know, things sort of started to change a little bit. And they built the one and a half million defender with mm -hmm. Brian Adams coming down the production line. It's, uh, they, don't, they got rid of the Reisler, uh, um mustache uh, plates. So, you know, that is another, yet another unique thing to the pre-production uh, vehicle is the uh, little mustache plates. And this car was like built to be sort of the pinnacle of uh, North American yeah. spec defenders at the time, you know. Uh, this was the last edition, the final edition of North American spec defenders. It was the uh, the station wagon, it had the safety devices roll cage, it yeah. had the diamond plate. It was, it was frequently called the diamond edition uh, because of that plating, but it was sort of the, the top spec that you could get. And I can remember going to the dealership and seeing that. And that's the one that everybody yeah, that's the one you want. It has air conditioning stock from the factory. Air conditioning, automatic transmission. Yeah. The uh, factory's already put uh, checker plating over all the places that uh, get really bad galvanic corrosion from the fasteners. So that's nice. It's the most American British car. It is the most American British car. Yeah, that's exactly V8, right. V8, air, air conditioning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's got, it's got a, it came, it came with a, uh, a 12 foot by 12 foot American flag, and it had everything it needed. Everything it needed. So, so Lauren, uh, talk to us a little bit about. Yeah, once it was confirmed and validated, uh, essentially, you know, we did a an employee vehicle sale. Okay. Because I was an employee of the company. Yeah. Uh, so I got it for, you know, sort of what they like to joke as a farm tractor price. Uh, nice. Back then. Uh, oh. A fair price, yeah. uh, and so I, I definitely benefit, benefited yeah. from yeah. that. Uh, and then they shipped it over and with the fleet of new vehicles for me, and it landed in Baltimore at the port, and uh, we had it shipped to Connecticut from there, which is where I, I mentioned I'm from. And um, you know, my dad babysat it until I got home from my assignment. And what kind of condition was the car in when you when you got to it finally? It, it's with you in Connecticut, and is it? pristine does it look like a brand yeah. new 97 yes. car yeah yeah it was it was nearly brand new at the time but now obviously 20 something years later right you know you, you see the bubbling and some of the corrosion coming through the paint um and you've had to you know replace you know bolts and new kits and things yeah. to just try to keep it 